Hi guys and welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny and as always I thank you very much for choosing to spend a little time with me. Today we have um, a video all about Ponty fabrics as promised. Um, so I don't have time to chit chat because it's a lot of information. <laughs> um, before I go any further though let me just say that the information I give you today is what I know about Ponty fabrics which is by no means definitive like there's no there's definitely stuff I don't know um, I'm just telling you what I know from my own experience and from the research that I've done but if there's something that you think I've got wrong or if you just have information to contribute please just leave a comment below because I'm I, I'm happy to hear any information you guys have on this topic or any topic for that matter um, so I'll tell you what I know about Ponty fabrics first of all um, it's important to know a couple of things about Ponty. First of all, we need to know it's a double knit. All Ponty's are double knits. And in fact, as far as I can tell, <laughs> Ponty Deroma just means double knit. So I know that that seems a little off because it seems like people make a distinction between Ponty and double knit. Um, I believe that the original distinction was that Ponty had at least some component of rayon in it, although I could be wrong about that. So let's just say Ponty de Roma or Ponty, whichever you want to call it, it's the same thing. I did make this mistake once in a video maybe a year or so ago about uh, my, what were they, my Picasso pants from the sewing workshop. I, at the time, thought that Ponty de Roma was a different variation of Ponty, but it's not. They're, it's the same thing. Um, the other thing is sometimes you'll come across something called, I think it's called Arietta Ponty, or there's one with another name, Ponty something. Those are manufacturer's names for their specific Ponty, so don't let those names confuse you. They're still a double knit. So, now that we know it's a double knit, uh, those of you who already know this, or those of you who are knitters, bear with me, I'll be quick. You need to know the difference between a double knit and a single knit, like a jersey. A jersey, and I have pictures here, a jersey has, um, is what we call stockinette stitch in hand knitting. And it has a right side that looks like this. Uh, this is an up close picture of what the structure of it looks like. The back looks like this. What that means is that the front is a smooth surface and if you look at it really closely you will see that there are little what are called pearl bumps on the back side. A traditional jersey or stock knit stitch um, fabric will curl towards the right side just because of the structure of the fabric. So a double knit uh, and a single knit or jersey is made with one yarn that essentially goes back and forth, back and forth. There are actually a couple of different ways that they make knit fabrics in manufacturing, but for our purposes, it's fine to know the one, which is that it, one yarn goes back and forth and back and forth, creating loops that connect to each other. A double knit is created with two yarns that go back and forth and back and forth, connecting to each other, to the rope beneath it. The purl side, so the wrong side of each of those threads, connects in the back. And that's why it's called the double knit, because you have a yarn on this side and a yarn on this side, and they're connected in the middle. So essentially, it's two yarns making the fabric instead of one. It has two faces, they're essentially the same. And those purl side bumps that you would normally see in a jersey or stockinette are sandwiched in between the two. What that means is, A, is it's a double thickness. So a double knit is going to be twice as thick as any jersey made from the same yarn. It also means that because you've got a knit side on both sides and the purl sides are sort of pulled together in between, it means that when you cut it, your fabric's not going to curl towards the outside. Which is good in the sense that it, um, it's just easier to cut and it's easier, and for me, it's easier to sew because you don't always have to keep fighting those curling edges. Um, it does, however, mean that whatever you make out of it is going to be uh, thicker and consequently slightly bulkier than if you were using a regular jersey. The other thing we need to know about Ponty is what it's made out of. 
And um, like I said, I think that originally when they called it Ponte de Roma or Ponte, I think that specific fabric was originally meant to have a rayon component. Ponte fabrics can be made out of rayon, pylon, pylon, rayon, polyester, nylon, and usually in these days, it always has a spandex component. It doesn't always. I'm just saying like most of the time it does have a spandex component in this day and age. Um, Ponties can also be made from any combination of those fabrics, of those fibers. A lot of times you'll see rayon polyester, rayon nylon, polyester nylon. Um, it's, it's pretty much always going to be a fiber that is either man-made or uh, heavily um, processed like rayon uh, plus some other fiber so the reason that there you often find nylon in Ponte is because nylon is a very thin fiber and it's very smooth um, like silk which is why they used it originally to make nylons or stockings that's why you find it in tights um, pantyhose socks that kind of thing Usually you'll find nylon in your ponte as a way to strengthen the fiber so that you don't get, um, you don't wear out any place where you're going to get a lot of abrading like on your inner thighs if you're making pants or something like that, under your arms in a jacket, that kind of thing. So nylon is, in my opinion, sort of a ne negligible component. It doesn't affect the drape or uh, structure really of uh, rayon ponte. So often you'll find rayon nylon spandex. Something like that. Don't worry about the nylon component. It's there to strengthen and make sure the the rayon doesn't wear away. Polyester on the other hand it will do sort of the same thing although you'll also find polyester nylon spandex uh, pontes. Polyester because it is a heavier fiber uh, and a thicker fiber it cannot be made as thin as nylon so it's got um, it's got a little more structure to it than nylon fibers do which means that if you mix polyester with rayon it will affect the structure of the fabric a little bit in the sense that it will give it a little bit more body and that's important to know because a double knit already has a fair amount of body because it's got those two layers together in the first place so that's not good or bad it just means you need to know that it's in there so you can decide what to do with that fabric and we'll get into that in just a minute now i ordered some swatches of different ponte fabrics from emma one sock and i'm going to tell you just sort of what they are and give you some variations on um what they feel like to me unfortunately these swatches they're just swatches so they're not very big and they're not gonna you're not gonna be able to see them very well but this fabric right here is polyester, viscose, and spandex. I don't know the percentages or anything, but I will tell you that it's quite firm. It has a really good recovery. This is not a particularly thick uh, ponte, um, but it is very firm. You could use this kind of ponte for, it's pretty lightweight actually. Um, but you could use this for just about anything that you wanted to have a little structure to. So hoodies, uh, jackets, you could definitely make pants out of this, although the stretch in this is not huge. So you want to check your stretch comp, your stretch uh, needs if you're making pants. Um, yeah, okay, so this is the polyester viscose spandex. This one is one that I see just i've only seen on the market in the last few years this one is tensile nylon and spandex this one is very lightweight sorry there's a staple stuck in here um this one is very lightweight i guess i'm just gonna have to leave that it's very lightweight and when you pull it you can actually see almost see through it um it does have a really light hand um, it's got really good stretch and really good recovery. Something like this. Now you'll see later in my video. I will, would I shy away from saying to use this kind of uh, ponte fabrics for 
a lot of things. But this, I think you could use for just about any um, knit garment. I don't think that you need to worry too much about this being a double knit because it's very thin. Um, and it does have, you can see it's got structure, um, but it's not super structured. Okay. So then this one is the one that I see most often. This is rayon, nylon, and spandex. This is also very firm, has really good recovery. This one definitely has spandex because it stretches both directions. This one is more of your typical mid-weight knit. Um, and you'll hear more in a little bit about what I think these are good for. This is what you usually find when you look for Ponte online and it says rayon spandex or rayon nylon spandex. It's this kind of thing. My last one, and this again is something I've only started seeing in the last few years. This one is viscose nylon and spandex. And again, really firm, really uh, solid recovery. Um, it's very elastic, this one. Yeah. And it looks the same on both sides. Stripes on the same on both sides. Okay. So, what are we going to do with these things? There are some things that these are, that Ponty's or other double knits are really good for, and some things that they are not. So, let's talk about uh, let's start with uh, pants here. Pants that are really good. Ponty is really good for um, pants that have a little more structure and sit closer to the body. So if you're making a pair of pull-on pants, you don't want to make something with um, a lot of ease in the hips because it's also going to have some ease in the waist. All of that because, again, because Ponty is a double knit, it's going to cause a lot of bulk around your waist. So look for something that is slimmer, like these Stylark Parker pants or the Tessuti Nita pants. And let's see. Oh, yeah, the Tessuti. I have the Tessuti Avalon pant. This is a wider leg, but you can see it's still slim through the hips and not really bulky at the waist. Um, the other one is the Tessuti Nina pant. Did I say that already? And then the Sewing Workshop Chesney pant. You can see again in this picture, it doesn't have to be a skin tight legging type pant, but it does need to be a little, it needs to be more close to the body in the hip, in the waist to avoid a lot of bulk. I also have this uh, Marcy Tilton, is it Marcy Tilton? Vogue 9193. Now they actually recommend Ponty for this, but here's the thing. With this pattern, I've made a couple of other Tilton patterns with the same issue where they actually are have a fair amount of ease around the hips and the waist. So I think you could do this pant in a Ponty if you make it in a size where you don't have a lot of ease around the hips and the waist. If it's got a lot of heat ease in the hips and the waist, you're going to be sorry you made it in a ponty because it's going to feel really bulky. Okay. Um, the other thing you don't want to do in a ponty knit pant is have something that has a lot of intersecting seams. So this pant here is um, the Naya, I think it's called Naya, N-A-I-A. A pant from Tessuti and I don't even it's a fuller pant which is actually okay except that it's got a lot of ease it looks to have a lot of ease in the waist and in the hips and it's got a pocket right there at the waistline which is going to add a ton of bulk and it's going to make you feel really bulky um the sewing workshop west end pants which is a pant that I have made and I actually really like so I know that this pant has a lot of ease in the hips and then it's got a pocket again, an in, inseam pocket right there at the hip. So it comes out very bulky if you're using a double knit. The Style Lark Ethel Designer Pant um, is also not ideal. You can see in this picture it's got a lot of pleats. It's very full. Um, and that all gets pulled together at the waist. Now, this isn't 
made for Ponte, so that's fine. I'm just using it as an example of what you want to avoid. Those pleats and gathers are going to make your waistline really bulky. The other pant I would totally avoid is um, this Marcy Tilton. Is this a Marcy Tilton? Where's my picture? Yeah. Um, Vogue 1731. Again, because I've made this pant, I know. It has, aside from having a pocket, this one sits a little bit lower and towards the front. So the pocket isn't as big of an issue. However, it has center front and center back seams plus side seams and inseams. All those seams in a double knit are gonna add structure to a fabric that already has structure. Because this is an oversized pant and it has a lot of structure, I feel like that is too much for a ponte knit. You want something that's gonna be, um, that's gonna not get so bulky on those seams for that. Like a linen, for example. A lighter weight linen, but even any linen, because it's generally a looser weave, is gonna be fine. But a ponte is a tightly knit, stiffer fabric so you're just going to get a lot of structure and it's going to make you it's going to make that fabric stand away from your body which is what makes you look big and then also to me it just makes me feel bulky okay for tops let's talk about tops that would be good if you look for tops that have loose structure and again not a lot of gathers or ruffles or pleats or a lot of not a lot of intersecting lines I think you could do just about anything however a couple of suggestions simplicity 9636 which is like an oversized relaxed sort of hoodie poncho would be great um, if you'd like a cardigan this one here is by Tammy handmade it's called the Cara cardigan it comes in a long version and a short version it's a little bit boxy which actually is sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but that Ponte actually is suited to something like that. If you want a boxy look, this is going to give it to you. Um, although we'll still, it's a knit, so we'll still have some drape. Okay. Simplicity 9275 is pretty much perfect for this. It's got, it's a fitted body. It's got a little architectural uh, style line to it. It's got a little pocket, and Ponte is going to hold the pocket perfectly well, so that's good. This is a favorite of mine, this uh, Itch to Stitch. I think it's called the Gothenburg, but I don't really know. Um, it has a funnel neck that stands up, and that is actually something that Ponte is really good for. So this is a knit top that's going to fit a little bit. It's a little bit looser all around, but it's not oversized. And it still has that sort of like architectural neckline so that Ponte works really well with. The Dorada Davies Maxine um, I think also could be really good. This does have intersecting seam lines across the front but I don't think it has a lot. So it might get a little bulky just right here at the shoulder and at the side seams but this they do recommend Ponte for this and I know it's because that very um, sort of streamlined architectural shape is really good for Ponte. The um, Sew Me Something Pol Paulina, which is essentially an oversized sweatshirt, um, is also really good. Your The weight of the fabric is not going to be so much because it's not gathered, it's not pleated. It's going to have enough drape for a sweatshirt, but it's going to also have enough structure to hold its shape. I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see, what else? Well, of course, my Butterick 6863 is perfect for Ponte fabrics. This one has a zipper in the front, so it wouldn't be good for a lot of knits, but Ponte fabric, because it has that stability, is really good for this. Also, Butterick 6492 which is, um, it, which does have some seam lines, like a big seam line across the front, and I think it does have another intersecting one. However, I've made this out of Ponte, and it worked really well. If you can find a light Ponte, that's even better. Or what did I say? What did I do with my swatches? 
something like this Tencel nylon um, spandex version that I showed you earlier, that would be great for that um, tilt and pattern. Things we want to avoid in tops. Butterick 6735 has a lot of drape in the front. I've made this top before, so I know that that front piece is quite voluminous. And it also has multiple seam lines. So if you use a ponte, you're probably going to get a lot of bulk and that drapey front is going to start to stand away from your body and look, again, look more bulky. Uh, Berta 5856 is not meant for a knit fabric, but I'm just pointing out anything like this with a ruffle or gathers is not great for a ponte. And I'm going to say it doesn't really matter what the thickness of your ponte is. It's probably going to be too much because most ponties these days regardless of the other fibers, are going to have some spandex in them, and that spandex is going to make it very heavy. So if you gather that, well, it doesn't make it all very heavy. It makes, if you gather that together, you're going to have a ruffle that's very heavy, and it's going to pull your shirt out of shape. So that's why I say avoid ruffles and gathers. Okay, next up is anything that's hugely oversized. This one here is the Tina Gibbons... Um, Rebel tank and while it's a really simple shape and it seems like it might work in a ponte I would never do a, this in a ponte. It's just too Big a piece of fabric for that and I think because all ponte is gonna have some structure to it You're just gonna feel like you're walking in a box. In fact, I'm just gonna say Because I'm really familiar with Tina Gibbons patterns. I would not use a ponte knit for really any of Tina's patterns I feel like that would really destroy the light, airy um, feel of her designs. While there are probably some I'm unaware of that could work in a ponte, I wouldn't do it myself. Um, another one is this Fisherman's Smock from uh, So Different UK. And again, this isn't made for a knit fabric, but I just want to point out that even though it has like that nice sort of um, architectural structured neckline, the gathers over the bust are no for me in a ponte because again, gathers are like that are gonna A, get heavy, and they're gonna force the fabric to sit away from your body and you're gonna look and feel bulky. Some other things that would be really good in a ponte. Um, the Bristol dress or skirt from the sewing workshop. I've seen this made up in both um, ponte knits and jerseys. I like it better in ponte because those seam lines, and I know I'm contradicting myself again, those seam lines in this sort of get lost in a jersey because it sort of collapses in on itself. In the ponties, they stand out more. Again, there aren't that many, so I think that you can get away with it. And I feel like the ponty adds the structure to this design that it really needs. Uh, next is the Style Art Camille dress. This has a really nice shape. It's pretty close to the body. It does have a really nice asymmetric hem. If you wanted to, you could even leave your ponte unhemmed and leave it straight because sometimes, especially when you get like a point where you have to do a hem on top of a hem or if you have to do a mitered hem, it can get a little bulky with the ponte. So just be aware of that. Um, the Chisuti Yuki dress. Again, this is not made for a... Um, Where'd it go? Here it is. The Tasuti Yuki dress is not necessarily made for a ponte, but you could certainly do this dress in a ponte. You would have enough drape to get the look you want from that cowl, but enough structure to maintain the shape in the body. Oh, I missed one. The Style Arc Alyssa dress. This is another one that has a slight drape in the front and has a pocket inset. And again, because your ponte has a little more stability, that pocket is going to keep its shape and you're still going to get the nice drape that you need in the body. This, however, is where I would be wary of using something with polyester in it. Because that polyester is going to give it more structure than it already has and I feel like you might not get the drape you want for that pocket area. Vogue 1860, which is a uh, Marcy Tilton dress, they recommend Ponte for this. This would be perfect for Ponte. And even if you had 
uh, ponte with a polyester component to it, this would be absolutely fine because it needs that structure. It's pretty slim cut. It's not close to the body, but it's slim cut. So you're not going to get anything that stands way far away from your body. You're going to some, get something that sits closer to your body in the first place. And then it's going to have enough structure to maintain the shape in the bottom portion of that dress and in the shoulder and the whole thing, really. And it'll still have enough stretch for you to pull it over your head. Um, the other thing I thought could be really good for a Ponte is the Chris Wood Sews Throw Jacket. Because it's just a piece of fabric essentially sewn in the back with like some seams, at the, some hems at the front. It could get a little bulky at that front where the front facing folds under and the hem comes up. You would just have to probably cut some of your fabric out there or miter that corner. But aside from that, I think this would be beautiful in a Ponte. And essentially, you could leave that hem raw again if you wanted to. Um, other things that you probably should avoid, and I've already talked about these. These are not necessarily meant to be made from Ponte or knits at all. I'm just saying as examples. The wildly popular style arc hope dress, in my opinion, would be a absolute disaster in Ponte. All those ruffles and gathers would be just way too much bulk and way too much weight. Same thing with the matchy matchy champagne fields dress. I love this dress. I've made it myself. Don't do it in Ponte. I think that would be a mistake. Um, the Chisudi Matea dress, again, because the body itself, if you did it as a top, I think it would totally work. If you add that gathered hem, I think you get into trouble. And the same thing with the Chris Woods Sews Daydream dress. Pretty simple shape, but it is voluminous. And you want to avoid that, I think. So, my takeaway is, if you want to use a Ponte fabric, understand that it's a double knit and by nature it's going to be heavier and consequently bulkier than a regular jersey knit. Also understand that the fiber component is going to be really important, specifically if you get into your polyesters, because the polyesters are going to affect the drape, whereas your viscose, rayon, nylon all have similar drapes, polyester does not. So it's going to add some some more structure to the fabric than it already has. If you have a polyester or a fabric, a ponte with some polyester in it, look for things that sit closer to the body or things that have structure. Like I said before, uh, I, I shouldn't say all hoodies. I should say uh, jackets, um, smaller, closer fitting cardigans, uh, what did we have in it? that Marcy Tilton dress that's meant to be that's closer to the body. If you're making pants or um, any kind of garment like your uh, like the Ponty pants we showed at the beginning, you can use any Ponty fabric for those and they're probably going to be fine. They sit close enough to the body that that extra structure from the polyester isn't going to make a difference. In fact, it would probably be good because it's just going to feel more pant like and less legging like if that makes sense. Avoid, what else did I say? Avoid ruffles, gathers, pleats, and too much volume. And I think that's everything I know about Ponte. Um, in terms of washing, people do ask me this. I have, I have made a number of things out of Ponte and I have always washed them in cold water. I have on occasion dried them. I usually hang them to dry, but I have on occasion dried them and I haven't had no issues with that. Again, that's not to say you won't have any issues, just to say I haven't. Um, the other thing is I will say about Ponte that's really important is that quality matters and it doesn't really matter what the fiber content is. You're going to find fabrics in every of every type in greater and lesser qual qualities. The higher the quality, the better your chance of success are and unfortunately the only way to tell whether or not you're getting a high quality fabric is to either know the fabric already um, or get a swatch of it and test it or just buy it and see what happens. But as a general rule, 
your Ponte fabrics aren't going to be, your quality Ponte fabrics are not going to be cheap. So if you're getting a really inexpensive Ponte, just beware that it may not be the quality that you're looking for. I'm not saying you have to have the most expensive Ponte. I'm just saying beware of prices because price does reflect reflect quality a great deal in fabrics. Not always, but higher quality fabrics are going to cost a bit more than low quality fabrics. So just beware of that. I've had a number of low quality uh, Ponte fabrics where the fat, the, the, um, the dye just like bleeds like crazy. Like even just when you're working with it, not even in the washer. So just be aware of that. And that you guys is everything I know about Ponte. I, um, I wish I knew more and I hope what I do know is helpful. As I said at the beginning, if you guys have any information on Ponte that you want to share with us, please, please, please do so in the uh, comments below. Next week, I think I'm just going to do a catch up on some things I've been working on and um, yeah, show you what I've been making in the last few weeks. Until then, I wish you guys all happy sewing.